So we're going to open the Rose and Legislative Committee. Uh, everyone's present except Commissioner Anderson and, and talk to him. I could, could be late, I don't know. But everyone else is here. So it's uh, next is, is prayer. John. Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together for the people's business. We ask that, that what is said here tonight may be edifying and, and pleasing and that we may all treat each other with, with respect, uh, even in, in the midst of disagreement. We ask all of these things in your holy and almighty name. Amen. Hey, the first item on the agenda is approval of the December 19th, 2023 Rules and Legislative Committee Minutes. Move to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Public comment period. Does, does anyone outside? I haven't had anybody. I didn't see anybody <laughs> sign in or anything. Does anybody have, uh, want to be recognized? There have been none. We'll go on with the uh, agenda. The uh, next item is consideration of placing the January 9th, 2024 Commission Minutes on the February 13th, 2024 Commission Agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> the next item is consideration of placing the notary applicants on the February 13th, 2024 County Commission Agenda. Motion to place them on the agenda. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? The veterans report uh, was in our packet. Uh, there were 52 veterans that were transported to the VA hospitals and 45 veterans that had been by the office in December. And uh, we have the totals and we generally look at them over the entire year through January, December of 2023. There were 711 veterans transported to the VA hospitals, and there were 890 visits to the office. So we do, as we generally do, want to commend uh, Mike Rose. He's done a great job, and he might want to have something else to add to that. And I'll also like to, also like to add that uh, Ben Ely, who is the addition to the office this year, has done an outstanding job. He's a great researcher. And he's taken some things all the way to the state. He's done a great job for the office, for this county, and everything else. So I'd like to give Ben a lot of credit for what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there any questions? Anyone have any questions or comments? And then we'll go to the next item is uh, the clinic report. All of these are for our, uh, our own information only, but I believe the the medical report, there were 90 that were uh, served in uh, December. And the dental report, I believe there were 72 patients that were seen uh, last month. Is there any other comments or questions or any other discussion? Okay. And then we'll go to the next. Uh, the Exxon report, uh, of course, they meet normally right before. We do last week, and then we had the other report from uh, December in there as well. But uh, uh, Commissioner Anderson is, is, is over that, and he usually brings us up to speed. But it looks just like they just had some general repairs in uh, in December, uh, fixing the, the front door was repaired. I think they were refinishing the kitchen floor, and there was some lighting in one building that was repaired as well. But pretty pretty much standard. So uh, the jointless, uh, the joint homeless uh, task force, uh, Mr. Hooker, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, last week was a, a challenging time for the homeless with the weather, uh, especially with the temperatures, with it getting down to the negatives. I do have uh, just a little bit of a report of kind of how that went. Um, and some thank yous to several people who stepped up during that time. Um, very early on, Toby Sneed and Kay Bartley uh, were in contact with myself and many, many other people across the, the city um, to be able to kind of work a process to be able to find 
uh, some warm shelters, a short, a warm area that we could get the homeless to uh, during the, the critical moments uh, during this last week, uh, as well as being in contact with David Kitchens with EMS. Uh, he was uh, involved through early on to kind of help spread the word through emergency services and, and kind of help us with those. And so a big thank you to him. Uh, EMS, uh, they were big into being able to kind of, as they worked patients, being able to guide them to those warming locations along with the Shelbyville Police Department and the Bedford County Sheriff's Department. Um, specifically, the two churches that stepped up to, to create warming shelters was Fairhaven Church and also Gateway Church. Uh, both of those uh, stepped up to be able to find a place for them to be able uh, to get out of the weather for several days, and I think there were several homeless that utilized that. Um, over the last couple of months, I do apologize for not being here. I had a grandfather in the hospital one day, and then the other I had to work out of town. Um, but I do want to kind of give you an update of where we're at with the Homeless Task Force um, when it comes to our process of continuing to work with that group. Um, we are working through a process now of finding a, a, a pricing structure for um, a tracking, um, I guess it's a software to be able to identify how many individuals in our community are considered homeless. Um, and as I've spoke to you several times over the last uh, several months, is we do consider homeless not only the people who are living in a tent, uh, who don't have a home, but also couch surfing, uh, as well as people who are living in cars, motels on a long-term basis. Those type people, we have to be able to find ways to help transition them into permanent housing. And so with that, we're not really able to come with recommendations until we get an accurate count. And so um, Jeff Rasnick at First Baptist Church, as well as Toby Sneed, which has been a, a significant benefit to the Homeless Task Force, are working up um, a proposal to the task force of really what the cost would be uh, for this particular software, as well as what the benefits of that. And so what happens is, is just to kind of walk you through what we're looking at is, is if an individual goes to the soup kitchen and um, they're asking for food, uh, help with clothing or, or, or place to stay, um, then they would be able to put them into this database and that would also then <coughs> trigger an email out to all of our nonprofits throughout the community to say, hey, we have an individual, these are their needs, who can help? And so it kind of brings all of these different conduits together uh, to be able to help expedite the, the uh, necessities for these individuals. The other thing it does is, is it gives us an accurate count when we have these cold weather events of how many of these individuals do we need to go communicate with to be able to see if they need a better place to stay, to be able to see if they need a warming station to be able to help that through. Um, and so that is kind of the next process of where we're at. We're going to be talking about that next month. Uh, that report will be uh, given by both uh, Pastor Asnick as well as Toby Sneed, and I, I encourage anybody that wants to come and hear that. I think it would be extremely beneficial. Um, one of the other items that we talked about uh, in the last couple months was what kind of long-term solution uh, do we need in Bedford County? Uh, well, it is universal through both the nonprofits as well as most of the people uh, on the committee that a long-term camping area is not, uh, through the communities that we've discussed, is not a viable option because it does not create, number one, um, it doesn't fix the problem from the homelessness, but it also does not, it also creates a safety issue as well as an issue with um, being able to provide the proper resources to those individuals. And so we're continuing to com communicate with other uh, communities that have resolved some of these problems or have kind of moved forward. And again, I'll bring those to you as those come. Um, the other thing that we've continued to communicate with are the drugs in, Be um, in Bedford County. That seems to be a contributing factor to a significant portion of this homeless community. Um, and with that, um, we have had numerous updates uh, from Chris Cook from the um, jail system uh, of how his program is working with a lot of the, those individuals, uh, as well as um, from Leticia Diaz, uh, Shelbyville Police Department that's a member of the committee that kind of talks about uh, a lot of the, the accessibility of those uh, drugs within the city. Uh, so the thing is, is we've had a really good group, a lot of good conversation. Again, we're continuing to move forward with that. Um, but the best thing that we're able to do is, is we're starting to pull the resources into a central location, which is the ultimate goal, uh, is to be able to make it 
easier and accessible for these individuals. Um, and then we had some good news of we now have a uh, mental health uh, organization here in the community now, um, which is the first that we've had in a while. Um, and so that puts us uh, another step of being able to point those that have mental health in the right direction. And so, uh, again, lots going on in the committee. Again, we're continuing to move forward. Uh, hopefully, I'll have some a little bit further on the actual true hardcore data within the next couple months. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I believe we have a, a, a thank Commissioner Mass. Is the next meeting before the commission meeting? Is that yes, what it's, it's always the night <clears throat> this is a connection with the homeless. Is this in, he'll, if he gets set up here, he'll. All right, Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate your your time. This is uh, this is something that I also also feel is, is very important. I know that Commissioner Hooker made mention to it within his report. Um, I'm going to read a, a statement to you, and then I'll be happy to quickly roll through this presentation uh, very briefly. Um, this is something that has been uh, that's been kind of laid on my heart for a while, and and something that I've spoken to many folks uh, about. And uh, I believe this is going to bring a solution to our county. So, Mr. Chairman, as we all uh, are well aware that illegal drug use happens and exists here in Bedford County, we, we all would agree that we wish that this was not the case. The fact still remains that just like in other counties, we are also impacted by the issue. One of the main problems that we are facing today is not just the simple fact that uh, people are using illegal drugs, but that illegal drugs are that they're using now are even hit on the tip of a lead pencil. I'd like to help address the problem and help find solutions. Over the past several months, I've met with several key experts within various parts of our county infrastructure in an effort to eventually put, uh, put together a group of people that will be called a coalition. And these folks are folks that I'm going to call experts. And these folks have agreed to come to the table to begin looking for viable solutions to the issue as it pertains to our county. After talking to constituents, the first agency that I reached out to was the Bedford County Sheriff's Office. I've had several productive meetings and conversations with Chief Deputy, Deputy Nakia Elliott, very thankful for that. And then I've spoken with Dr. Garrett, and since then, the list of potential key expert stakeholders that I'd like to bring to the table are as follows. <clears throat> You'll see this again in the presentation. Myself, solely as a facilitator, Nakia Elliott, Chief Deputy, Commissioner Troy Thompson. Uh, Chief Deputy is also going to bring a couple, maybe one or two deputies in SRO, Benji Burris with Judicial uh, Services Lieutenant, uh, City Police Personnel. Dr. Garrett is 100% um, on board. She is offering the assistance from Principal Pope, Principal King, Mental Health Director Lindsey Wiley. We would also like to get Juvenile Services involved. Mike DeJesus, the War Trace Fire Chief. Two pastors are listed, Pastor Lloyd Warren and Pastor Jimmy West. I'd also like to talk to the Parole Director and get buy-in there, as well as potentially bringing in recovering or recovered addicts. The mission statement is, is this. Through assessment, education, enforcement, and rehabilitation, we're committed to work cross-functionally utilizing all available resources in an intentional effort to help fight illegal drug activity in Bedford County. Folks, we all know that this is not just a law enforcement issue. This is not just a school issue. This is an issue that is a county issue. My job will simply be one of facilitation. I'm not an expert in any of these areas. I want to make that very clear. I simply want to be in the room 
and help bring the experts to the table in a collaborative effort to help our county. Our first meeting will most likely be next month and I'll start to as I start to coordinate calendars. I simply wanted to respectfully inform you all here of those efforts and Mr. Cha uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to receive your, your blessing. Uh, just a couple of things on this, this presentation. You know, um, some folks would say that we don't have a problem, but I believe that we, we do, so do many constituents. As Commissioner Hooker just mentioned, we have a problem uh, as it spans into our homeless. The target of this coalition is not to do anything other than provide a solution. It's not to point fingers, and it's not to do anything other than help us overall as a county. There are four pillars that I've broken everything down, and this is how I believe that we can start to operate. Number one is to take an honest, accurate assessment of the data that we have. I know that um, just today I've, I've had conversations with uh, Director George. I know that today all the commissioners were able to receive the uh, DTF data that we've asked for. I'm very appreciative to the Sheriff's Office and also to Director George for that data. Um, so we'll take that data in conjunction with many other data points and then work, work cross-functionally to help provide solutions. There's already many solutions already in place. That's evident. But I believe that we can possibly take all of the solutions and bring all of these stakeholders to the table in an effort to identify those solutions and maybe even create more. And then at the end, would be an accountability process just to make sure that we're maintaining the solutions that are already in place, review those solutions, and then inform the public of the actions and those activities. There are the members again. There's a quick picture of the amount of fentanyl <laughs> that it takes as a lethal dose, and that comes directly from the DEA.gov website. The last point I'm going to make, and again, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your time, appreciate the time of the uh, committee. My number one goal is to just help one person. I believe that if we can help one person, that one person then has an influence on all the others around that individual. That one person has an influence within the school system, within the community they live in, their family, their friends, their potential co-workers, their employees. I have a passion to help. I personally have never been addicted to drugs. I don't know what it's like, but I've seen the effects of addiction, and it's hard, especially on children. So I appreciate your time, and I will keep you very posted. Question, Mr. Chairman? Yes, absolutely. That's uh, I think that everybody on this county commission, and I think I can speak for all of them, believe that drugs are the number one problem in our community. And so when you said that some people say that we don't have a drug problem, I think everybody agrees we have a drug problem. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. And I think all of us want to find a way and find a solution. So thank you for thinking about this, and thank you for bringing this to our attention. So I'm going to assume, based on what you've done and who you've spoken with, you've spoken with the district attorney, mm -hmm. Rob. Carter, he's on board and he's supporting you fully on this. I've spoke to Director Shane George and he is supporting. He's the drug task force. Okay. I asked about the district attorney. Have I, haven't, spoken I haven't spoke to the district attorney. Okay, and you've spoken to the drug task force, Director George, and he's fully engaged and on board Absolutely, and he's offered to actually come and help um, okay. or even open up a, a meeting. And have you talked to the court system, Judge Rich? I, I haven't yet, no. Have you no. spoken to the sheriff? About this, but you've spoken to Nakia. I've on spoken this? to the sheriff briefly, and I've had meetings with with Chief Deputy. So the Chief yeah. Deputy, you are on board with all this 100 percent. Okay, and have you spoken to the county mayor? Is the county mayor? On board I haven't with spoken this? to the county mayor. No. Have you spoken to the city of Shelbyville, Mayor of Wartrace, Mayor of? I've spoken to the mayor of Bellbuckle. Yeah, I sure okay. have. And they're all on board with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you want us to do on the county commission? What are you asking of us? I don't need anything from you, Commissioner. I'd just like to have your blessing. And if you can offer any sort of help through this process, that would be great. Well, that's interesting because we all want to help, and you've already put it all together 
and you're just telling us here, you've already done all this, and you've just come to let us know that that's what you're doing. You're more than welcome to attend the first meeting. Not that's sure what your of. objection Thank is to no, this, I'm this asking, effort. I'm asking. I'm no objection. Yeah. I'm just curious that this has already been done, and you've just come to us to pay the complete here. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate the, appreciate you acknowledging that. Do you have any other questions for me, sir? Well, I think that's pretty. I think you kind of answered everything. Thank so, you, Commissioner. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your time. Thank you, I Commissioner you Maddox. Do, do. Absolutely. You, you, Anybody's taking the, willing to take a leadership role and, and do what I think this was, uh, Commissioner Vick was just to make us all aware that he's starting this initiative, and it's just in the, it's just in the start, starting phases of it. I just don't want to and be in some the of a criminal positions that are not. Or any kind of thing that would jeopardize ongoing investigations with our judicial system and our sheriff department, with our district attorney, with our drug task force. I don't get put in a jackpot on that from the county commission. If you want to go do that, we're all, that's fine. No, that's, and, and that, that commissioner is a valid point, and I want, I'll address that, is that is a very valid point. And because of that, uh, Chief Deputy and I have had many conversations, and the intent is that this would be open, the information that we would um, use, partake, uh, divulge would all be public information. Anything pertaining to an ongoing investigation, it would be very detrimental for us to speak to that. It would be very detrimental for him to bring that to this to this committee. I believe the main intent of this is just simply there are many people within the county. We have our education system. We have our we have our law enforcement. We have us as citizens. There are a lot of there are a lot of folks that are doing independent things to either address the drug problem. Or they're just simply aware of it. My goal is just to bring everybody to the table. And I'm going to announce again, I'm not an expert at all. I'm just a guy that cares. And all I want to do is open the door and sit at the table and say, thank you, experts, for coming. How can I help you? Do you know when the meeting will be? The first yes. meeting? We're, we're targeting a Thursday, I believe, Chief Deputy. Is that the best day in February? We're going to do one in the So we'll know then. Any other questions for Commissioner Maddox? Thank you, sir, for uh, telling us uh, what our intent was. And I think anything we can push, any type of initiative to help with the drug situation is well done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any, any other questions concerning that? And certainly, uh, I was on the Homeless Task Force, and the Lieutenant Cook is on there, too, and he deals with that, uh, drugs right. all the time, and it's, it is, as he'll say, and all of them will, and law enforcement is the number one problem, as we all we all know. Okay, uh, is there any other business to come before the committee? We got, uh, yeah, we got one last thing here, one Commissioner thing. Yaki. Hopefully this is the last one. Uh, these are rules six, seven, eight, and nine, so this winds everything up uh, on the front page there I just added a county right there in this okay. section B the top of the next page uh, page two goes back to section E what we've been doing is uh, as we did this past January decide our standing committee memberships by the chairperson um, talking to everybody and so forth. And as we realized from this last election, and Ginger has pointed out, we need to go to a September uh, change of anything that we need to do as far as the committees. So if you would bear with me on the top of the second page, all standing committees of the Board of, Educa uh, Board of Commissioners shall be elected annually by majority vote of the Board of Commissioners at each September meeting of the Board of Commissioners. Before the August meeting, the rules of legislative, uh, and before the rules of legislative meeting, the chairperson shall ask each commissioner which committee he wishes to serve on. The rules of legislative committee acting as a nominating committee shall submit, submit nominations for the standing committee positions to the Board of Commissioners based partially on seniority and individual preference. And then delete those last three sentences. We've already covered the death and the resignation in section 1P. So that, that comes completely out. So 
what this is asking, instead of doing it in January, we do it in September so that we don't get into this thing that we got into on this last election. The last red paragraph that says the chairpersons of the standing committees have the same voice, I'm going to move that down to section H, which talks about the chairpersons. Um, everything else that's changed is either just a rewording there's not anything that's different about it. I did insert on section L the public comments under the standing committees. Also, we've got it under the county commissioners. And Ginger may say that we can move that somewhere else and do it just as one, but um, The rest under bylaw seven. These are appointed subcommittees. Uh, we've only had one every every so few years, but should there be one? So section B is talking about uh, the mayor appointments on boards and so forth. So I'm, that needs to come out, and I've moved it to. Rule 8, Section A. So again, it's just reshuffling of things. On the Rule 8, on all the boards and department heads and so forth, there was just a lot of verbiage in all of these, and so I, we, uh, I pulled everything out to read just at the top what everything should be. And the thing that we want to do is um, that the membership on these boards will be approved on an annual basis um, in the March or September meeting. And there's the mayor may want that change to January, July, but at least twice a year because there's so much rotation. And they've got a program now that will tell you who's coming up and, and so that we don't get into a lawsuit on not having done what we're supposed to do. So. Everything else is just taking out stuff that we didn't need and rewording things. The main thing is that rule about the September meeting, uh, uh, September appointments. Okay, are there any questions from the committee or for the commissioners? On the, where it says on this 911, <clears throat> um, it says take out, no, we're at, are we taking that? No, we're adding that. Appointed by county mayor subject to approval by the commission. And it says delete. So we're taking that out. Where are you? I need to help me back. Bylaws number nine. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, number 11. It's number 11 on 911 board emergency committee. Uh, the nine one board nine one one board doesn't exist anymore. I think it does. The yeah. Nine the nine one board. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm sorry, not the nine one one. The <laughs> EMS board does not exist. No, this anymore. is nine one one. <clears throat> what number is that one? Eleven. Number eleven. Eleven. Yeah. They're have a board of directors is required. Uh, appointed by the mayor, subject to approval of the commission. Yeah, and then it says delete. Uh, Scott, can you help me on that one? The, can you find the it? The 911 board, does it have to come before the commission? Yes, the mayor nominates under the county commission. Okay. Right. Okay, I don't know why I need it, so I'll, I'll zap that, leave yeah. that in there. Good work, Commissioner Young. Same thing on 16. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, senior citizen. There had to have been a reason why I did what I did, but I'll, I'll think about it. And if anybody uh, sees anything else, just please let me know. I'm going to try to get 
if I can get over all this head mess, try to get with Ginger within the next few weeks and let her go over everything, make sure we're compatible with what we're supposed to be doing. No more questions. questions. You have anything else? Thank you, Commissioner Yaki. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, I believe we have uh, one other uh, item under other business. It was a zoning change request. Mukesh Chadhari, map 079, <coughs> parcel 010.00. The applicant has requested a change of zoning classification from A1 agricultural forestry to C2 general commercial district for commercial uses. The Planning Commission in its November meeting unanimously recommended rezoning to the County Commission. The property is currently an unimproved, vacant, one-acre lot near the intersection of 41A North and Grand Station Boulevard, which is Union Station Development. The subject parcel and unincorporated parcel adjoins Brad's Market parcel, which is fully inside the corporate city limits of Shelbyville. The new owner of Brad's Market would like to rehab the old building and update its facade and move the fuel pump island to this parcel. Currently, the fuel island now sits almost entirely within the highway right-of-way, making ingress and egress to and from the fuel island to the highway dangerous. Uh, I came in from Franklin today, and someone had to go on without, without risk being caught. That is very true. I witnessed that today. The owner wants to demo the old fuel island and build a larger island to the side of Brad's market on the subject parcel. I think the planning commission unanimously approved it, so I'd move for approval to the commission, Mr. Chairman. Second. 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 Is there any questions or any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any other business to come before the uh, committee? It'll certainly be safe, I think, with through the worst of it. We've had some really terrible cold weather. Okay, so motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay, so moved.